All right, so again, it's word tabs and tables and columns. And I'll be with you till 2.30 today. And again, my name is Jan, Jan Romano, and we will communicate through the chat. All right, let's jump right in. So I'm gonna go to a particular slide. I already went through some of the basics of how to communicate with me. And so let's take a look. Word, tabs, tables, columns, how do you use them and when should you use them? Well, take a look. This is just an overview of what we might be able to cover today. Working with tabs, what are the defaults, how to set a tab, how to edit, how to move, how to delete. What are the limitations of using tab stops and using tab stops in resumes, which is very important. Uh, take a look, working with newsletter style columns and we'll be working with how to put in line dividers and turning paragraphs into columns and using column breaks. And then if look to the right, working with tables. And there's a lot working with tables. There's a lot of things that we can do and I've listed them here. And um, my goal is to cover this information in the short amount of time that we have together. All right, so here we go. As I mentioned, there are three ways to create columns. Tabs are the most common and they're used to set up text that you're going to type going across. Um, they do have limitations, and we'll talk about the two limitations, and one of them is bulleting columns, so putting bullets on columns, and then word wrapping in columns. So I'll show you those limitations, and then I'll show you what do we do if we want that to happen, but tabs won't allow us to do bullets on every column and word wrapping in a column. We're going to be using tables. So tables are definitely the most versatile for creating columns and rows. And uh, the only thing we recommend is that you do not use tables in resumes. And um, I'm gonna be teaching the formatting resume class next uh, Thursday, the 28th. So I would highly recommend at 10 o'clock that you sign up for that. And so you'll learn a lot more about getting your resume to go through the applicant tracking system software that's out there that most companies are using to look at your resume. And one of the things is, is that tables don't necessarily work when you're putting in a, uh, when you're putting them in a resume. They work everywhere else, but we recommend that not using tables in a resume. And if I get a chance to talk about that a little bit more, I certainly will. And then there's newsletter style columns. And that's how you put your text into columns so that you read down one column and then up the other and down another column and up the other. So. You're, this is more in a uh, newsletter, and, and that's why it's called, or a newspaper, and that's why it's called newsletter style columns. So the three ways to create columns are what we're going to talk about, and we're going to start with tab stops. So as I mentioned, you're gonna get these slides, and so these slides are reference tools, and one of the things that I want you to look at right here is when I jump into the Word document, I'm going to show you that the default tab is a left tab, but then look here. There's something called a center tab and a right tab and a decimal tab, a bar tab, a first line indent and hanging indent. So we're gonna focus on the left, center, right and decimal tabs and I'm gonna show you how to use them. But the left tab is the default, all right? So if I jump into a Microsoft Word document right now and you're going to be able to see the Word document and I'm going to go to File, New and Blank Document and you can see that here. Notice over here on the left-hand side, here's the L. And the L is the symbol for a left tab, and that is the default. Now, I'm gonna be jumping back and forth between PowerPoint and Microsoft Word, and I want you to notice these symbols. An L looks like a left tab. An upside down T is the symbol for a center tab. A backwards L is the symbol for a right tab, and an upside down T with a dot is a symbol for a decimal tab. There's a line tab um, as well, or what we call a bar tab as well. So those symbols are displayed in a Word document. So I'm gonna jump back. So they've displayed over here on the left-hand side and watch when I click. There's the upside down T, which is the center tab. I'll click again, there's the right tab. I'll click again, there's an upside down T with the decimal and that's the decimal tab, the bar tab, the first line and the indent lines and then I'll click again and, and you can keep clicking and you can keep clicking and go around and around and finally go back to the L if you like. So the L is the default and that means that it's a left tab. And we're going to be using that left tab on the ruler. Now the ruler I have displayed. If you're not sure how to get the ruler, there's a ruler across the top. 
there's also a ruler on the left as well. And if you go up to the ribbon in Microsoft Word and you go to view and you look in the show group, you'll see the ruler button. And of course, I have a check mark there. This is a toggle button. So if you click on it once, it shuts the ruler off. If you click on it again, it turns the ruler on. And that is how you view the ruler. So if you don't have a ruler, you need one. So you need to go to view ruler and get it. Okay. And then we talk about putting text into columns. And they're all different variations of columns. And I'll be giving you some examples. And of course, um, you can certainly ask questions along the way. But these columns, I'm going to decide that I want to put them within this ruler here. Left margin indicator is here. Right margin indicator is here. So I'm going to be setting some tabs. And I'm first going to use the default, which is a left tab. And it's going to be very easy. Watch when I go back to the PowerPoint. There are just a couple of sets of instructions. But notice it says to set a tab when before you type. That's going to be very important. You set the tabs before you type. And how? You click on the ruler to set a tab. So you single click on the ruler, and I'll show you where on the ruler to set that tab. And then you're going to start typing and hitting the tab key to jump your cursor to the tab stop on the ruler. So let's go back to Microsoft Word. And let me just give you a few little things about, before we set a tab, about your tab key that is on your keyboard. Now your tab key is typically to the left up beside your Q key. And that tab key is set up, if I tap it, and I will, it's set up to jump about five spaces every time I tap it. And some of you might do tab, 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 and move that over. And if you hold down the shift key and hit the tab key, now, a lot of the times it'll go back depending on um, what you're doing. Oops, the control, here we go. And um, so tab, tab, tab. And then you can also use, if you go home, you can use your increase and decrease indents as well. So you can use the buttons or you can use the tab key. Now I wanna show you a button that's in Microsoft Word that you might've seen before. It's called the show hide. And watch when I click on it, it shows me how many times I've tapped, and that's crazy. That means I've tapped all those times to move my cursor over. We want to eliminate that. We don't want to do space, 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 holding down the space key, or we don't want to hit tab, tab, tab. What we want to do is we want to set tabs on the ruler. So let's say, for example, I have some skills that I would like to display, and I would like to have them in two columns. So before I start typing the actual skills, I'm going to bring my mouse up to the ruler and I'm going to eyeball and decide where I want to put the tab stops and how many do I want. So I want you to notice I'm going to go to the bottom of the number two, not too low, not too high, just right to the bottom of the number two and click once. I'm not going to double click, I'm going to click once and get an L on that ruler. I'm going to go to the bottom of the number four and click once and get right on that number four. So I've decided to set a tab at the two inch mark and the four inch mark. And my cursor stays over here to the left. Now, when I want to jump over and type under that two inch mark, I hit the tab key. And because I have set a tab, it overrides the tab key from jumping every five spaces. So if Microsoft Word doesn't see any tab stops on the ruler, the tab key will jump every five spaces. If the Microsoft Word, if the software sees a tab on the ruler, then it, when I hit the tab key, it'll jump to that stop. And it's a left tab, so it means that whatever I type is going to be left aligned with that tab stop. So it's going to start right at the two inch mark. So I'll put in here PowerPoint. I'll do some typing. I'll hit the tab key and notice it jumps over to the four inch mark and I will type Excel. And then what happens when I hit enter, because I've typed in the two columns that I want, but I want to hit enter and go down to another line. Notice the cursor goes all the way to the left. 
So how do I get under PowerPoint? I hit the tab key and it jumps right over to that for that L at the two inch mark, which is right under the P for PowerPoint. And I'm going to type Outlook and I'll hit the tab key and it goes right under the E in Excel and I'll type Word. And now I have, and I could keep typing, but now I have two columns of skills, okay? Easy enough so far, right? You set the tabs before you type. You hit the tab key to jump over to the tab, stop, and you type. And when you want to get to the next tab stop, you hit the tab key. So I had two tab stops. So watch when I put this show hide back on. You'll see that I tabbed once and I tabbed again. I didn't have to keep hitting tab, tab, tab. And I'm going to be uh, now very confident that um, when I hit the tab key, Excel and Word will line up or PowerPoint and Outlook will line up. I'm not worrying how many spaces do I need or how many tabs do I need to hit, okay? Now I'm gonna ch take that show hide off and I want you to take a look, it was very simple. I set the tabs before I typed. So I'm gonna jump back over here and just take a look. You always set a tab before you type, you click on the ruler. And what kind of tab did we use so far? We used the default, which was a left tab, which means everyone, every text that you type is going to line up with that L on that ruler. Now look down here. What if I decide to edit or delete or want to move a tab? Well, there are three rules that you want to make sure that you are two rules, basically, that you want to make sure that you um, look at. And number one is select all the text that goes along with the tabs. You see, I might have other text in this document, but I only select the text that I'm working on that goes along with the tabs. And then I'm able to look at step number two, drag the tab right or left on the ruler and all the text will adjust. And if I wanted to delete, I would drag the tab, stop, the L in this case, down off of the ruler. So let's take a look at that. So we're focusing on just this text that I've typed so far. So let me highlight these two lines. These two lines of text go along with this L and this L at the two and the four inch mark. I'm going to highlight the text, all of the text that goes along with these tabs first. Then I'm going to decide to move one of these tabs or both of them, but one at a time. And how do I get on one of these tabs to move? I point my mouse to the bottom of the L on the ruler. I hold down my left mouse button and do you notice a line, a little dotted line shows up and I drag very carefully and straight and I don't drag down or don't drag up. I drag very um, straight across and when I let go, it moves that column and it moves everything in that column that goes along with that tab. So I'll do it again here at this two inch mark. I'll point to the L, a line shows up. I stay nice and steady on the ruler and I move it, okay? So that was successful and that worked. But there are times where I'm not successful. And let me show you what I do by mistake so that when you make this mistake, you'll know how to fix it. So sometimes, for example, when I go to get on this L right here, sometimes my hand is not steady and oops, I click on the ruler and put another L. And I don't want both L's. I don't want the second L that I put on. So all I have to do is come up, you know where the undo button is, and I come up and hit undo. That's the first mistake is putting another L on the ruler. Please don't add any extra L's that you don't want. And an L is for a left tab, of course. So don't add any more tab stops. And if you do, don't try to fix it. Just hit undo. Now, sometimes when I'm dragging, so watch very carefully. If you can make your screen as large as you can get it, that'd be great. And if I point to this L and I drag to the left, but by mistake, I drag down. What does dragging down do? Watch when I let go of the mouse by mistake. What did it do? Look at the ruler. It deleted the L. It deleted that tab stop. So dragging an L down into this gray area means that you're deleting it. 
oops, I didn't mean to do that. But I do it sometimes by mistake because my hand wasn't steady, let's say. Well, how do I fix it? Oh, don't do anything other than just hitting undo. Always just hit undo and it'll go back and then you'll be able to grab onto the L and try it again. And nice and steady, move it where you want it to go. So really, what you've learned, let's take a look at the instructions. You set the tab before you type. You click on the ruler, what tab stop you want. And we're using the default right now. We're going to be using the other tabs shortly. And then if you want to edit it, you select all the text that goes along with those two tabs, the ones that I had on my ruler, of course, that I'm talking about. And you drag the tab stop right or left. If you want to delete it, you drag it down. What do you think? Pretty straightforward. And you must try this, of course, for you to really see what I'm talking about. So practice will be a good thing after this. The other thing is I want you to notice that when I click on PowerPoint, the L's are there, right? You see where I have the L's? OK, now what if I click down after the word word and I enter a couple of times? Those L's stay on the ruler. What if I want something different um, to go along with this document that I'm creating? Well, let's say, for example, this document um, has my skills in it, um, which, again, would probably be, you might be thinking resume type thing, but let's just use all different types of examples here. So the next example that I want to use is going to be, let's say, um, uh, products and inventory. I want the product and the number of products that we have on hand. Okay, so I'm going to use, notice up on the ruler, there's the two inch mark and the four inch mark still there. Well, instead of using these two tabs, see where my cursor is? If I delete these two tabs, Word works where the cursor is. The two tabs will only be deleted for where the cursor is, not above. So I'll prove it to you. I'm gonna take this L right here, drag it down. Take this L right here, drag it down. Why? Because I'm gonna go over and I think I'd like to use a right tab, which will help me type in numbers, whole numbers easily. So I'm gonna click once and get an upside down T, which is a center tab and click again and get a backwards L, which is a right tab. And I'm going to put that, let's say, at the two inch mark. So now I'm going to type a product, product one. I'm going to hit the tab key and I'll say that we have a thousand. I'll hit enter product two. I'll hit the tab key. We have 50. Product three. We have 100. Do you notice what's happening when I typed in that text? Because this is a right tab, it backs up. So everything is lined up to the right. Oops, lined up. I'm just going to click once on this tab right up here, and you can see the little dotted line coming down. And this text is lined up to the right. And sorry, I hit the space bar there. I'm just going to hit undo. And so when you're using whole numbers, it's good for a right tab. And right tabs are good for a lot of things. But I want you to notice this, so don't blink. For product one, two, and three, I used a right tab, and I put it at the two-inch mark. If I decide I want it at the two-and-a-quarter-inch mark or two-and-a-half-inch mark or three-inch mark, remember I highlight everything, and I move the tab. So I'm moving the backwards L, which is the right tab. Make sense? All right, now I want you to watch when I click on PowerPoint. Notice the two L's are still there in Outlook. The two L's are still there in Excel and Word. The two L's are still on the ruler. When I click on product one, the right tab is there at the three inch mark. So Microsoft Word, when you highlight your text or click on your text, is going to show you the tab stops on the ruler that go along with this text. 
Again, when you highlight your text, it's going to show you the tab stop that goes along with the ruler. And if you use the wrong tab stop, you can drag it down and delete it and add a new tab stop there. Or if you wanted to move the tab stop, as you've seen, you drag it right or left. All right, let's keep going with a few other tab stops. I'm going to move my mouse over here to the left. And instead of using the right tab, I'm going to click my mouse. We're going to use a decimal tab this time. And I'm going to take this tab off the ruler, this tab off the ruler. And I think I'll put a decimal tab at the, let's say, one and a half inch mark. You see the upside down T with the dot? It's right here based on where my cursor is. And I'm going to put in here, let's say a menu. And the first thing on the menu is going to be pizza. I'm gonna hit the tab key and it's going to line up with the decimal tab and watch when I type. So pizza, I'll put a dollar sign. It's going to be, um, ooh, it's gonna be a fancy pizza, 22.50 cents. And I want you to notice this i'll scroll up a little bit so you can see this decimal point is where what's lined up with this decimal tab so the 50 is to the right of the decimal tab and the 22 is to the left of the decimal tab all right let's see um ooh, i love rum cake i'm going to get a rum cake from a bakery which is going to be let's say 36 dollars Yep, they're expensive. And so notice the decimal points are lining up. All right, and um, let's say lobster for two. And it's a whole dinner. And I'm gonna hit the tab key and it's um, one, it's uh, 110. Now, again, the decimal points are lining up. You see that? Not the dollar signs, but the decimal points. So, what if I wanted to now take these three lines of text? I'll actually take these three lines of text, right? And I want to move this. What do I do? I point to it and I move it. And now all the other tabs are still in place in my entire document. When I click on PowerPoint, two L's for the left tabs. When I click on product one, a backwards L for a right tab for these numbers. And when I click on pizza, the decimal tab is showing up. So let me take a look at the chat. Do you always need to press enter twice to change tab type? No. So over here on the left hand side, everybody, is the list of, let me jump back and show you. The left is first, the right, the center, and the decimal, okay? And then remember, there are other, the bar and the indents. So if I come over here to Microsoft Word, and I want a left tab, take a look. One, two, three, four, and now I've got a left tab. If I want a right tab, I click again, one, two, and there's the right tab. I want a center tab, which we haven't done yet. Oh, I already passed it by clicking over here on the left. So now I have to click one, two, three, four, five, six. And now I finally get it. It's like a spinning, you know, it spins. It starts off with the left tab and then it will give you the right tab. You click it again, it'll give you the center tab. You click it again, it'll give you the decimal tab. All right, let me take a look. Can I change the tab type on already typed text? Definitely. So say, for example, let's take a look at this. Let's take a look at this right here. Let's say these products, let's say, okay, I'll talk about these products. And maybe this is the price instead of the inventory. So this, maybe we need to add the price in as well. All right, so I'm gonna highlight this text and notice I used the right tab. Now I'm also, because I've highlighted the text, it knows exactly what three lines to add this decimal tab. 
So I'm going to come over here to the left, tell Microsoft Word by clicking and finding the decimal tab first. I don't drag, I just move my mouse, and I think I'll put the decimal tab right here. So I can add a tab. Now watch when I go to the 1000 and hit the tab, and then I will type um, $20. Watch when I click beside the 50 and hit the tab, I will type uh, $12. And watch when I click beside the 100 and hit the tab, I'll type $2. So now I've added a tab to this three lines of text. I kept the right tab and I added a decimal tab. What if I wanted to change the right tab to a left tab? Watch, I can always change anything as long as I do what first? Highlight, then how do you delete a tab? You get on it and drag it down, let go. And then I'll come over here to the left and I've got to tell Microsoft Word what kind of tab I want. So I will click until I see the L, there it is. And then I'll come over here and I think I'll put it at the two and, a half, two and a half or so. Now it's a left tab and everything lines up to the left. Remember if I don't like it, I drag it off. I find the tab style that I want over here on the left. Microsoft Word now knows that I want to use this type of tab, which is a right tab and I go put it on the ruler. So yes, everything can be changed at any point, as long as you do what? As long as you highlight the text that you're working on. Okay, all right, excellent. These are great questions. I'm taking a look at the chat. All right, so for, somebody mentions they use Format Painter and um, When you use Format Painter, it typically copies the formats, and we'll put that where the tab stops are as well. Very good. All right, so what do you think about tabs so far? Pretty simple. Just two things to remember, everybody. You set the tab before you type. That's the best method. You click on the ruler to set the tab or tabs, and then you start to type using the tab key to jump over to the tab stops. Then if you want to edit, you always step number one, select the text first. And I show you why it's very important to follow those instructions. Say for example, this PowerPoint, Excel and Outlook, I forget to highlight first and I move this L. So where's my cursor right now? It's on PowerPoint. So if I take and move this L left or right, I'm only moving PowerPoint. And then I'm kind of messing everything up, right? So just hit undo if you do that. Know that you need to highlight all the lines of text that go along with those two tabs. And then you move the tab stop or change the tab stop and all the text pointing to that particular group of text you've highlighted will change. Okay, really simple if you follow those rules. Now, let's talk about some of the um, limitations to setting tabs. And let's talk about, can we set all these tabs on one line? And we sure can. So those are the next things that I'm gonna talk about. And so I think I'll just put a page break right here and keep on going into this document and play around a little bit. So notice the two L's are on the ruler. So maybe I want one L, I want one decimal, and I want one right tab. I'm just playing. So I go over here to the left and I find the symbol I want, and I just click where I want to put that. All right? Maybe I'll move this over a little bit. Locked. Okay, so I'm going to hit the tab key. I'm going to put name, hit the tab key, and I'm going to put salary, 
hit the tab key and I'm going to put position or maybe I'll say job title. Okay, hit the tab key and I'll just put Mary. Hit the tab key and Mary is going to get, let's say this is a hourly, all right? And so we're gonna do 35.50. Hit the tab key and the job title is going to be, um, uh, let's say office manager. So what do you notice about this line right here? Do you notice that this line is looking a little different than the line below? We'll fix it after, okay? All right, keep in mind, I'm gonna hit enter, hit the tab key, I'm gonna put John. Salary is going to be, let's say, 33.85. Oh, and I forgot that dollar sign, so let me just type that in. Remember that, it's not like Excel, where Excel can dress the number up after. All right, and let's say that they are on customer service. Okay, so I've got two people, and this these two lines look pretty good, don't they? And this line right here needs a little bit of an adjustment. Would you agree? So notice how I highlight this line only. And I'm gonna move this tab over to the right a little bit and just eyeball, make salary look a little bit better. And job title, maybe I'll move it over a little bit so maybe it's kind of centered. You know, it all depends on the type of look you want and you're just moving the tabs so that you get it to the way you want it to look, that's all. So someone's asking if you wanna clean up multiple tabs in a document, you have to do each line separately is yes, that's the, that is the case. Each line is separate or if you have a group of lines of text that you're gonna clean up, you can highlight the group of lines. How do you put in a page break? Someone's asking, I think. Just control enter is the keyboard shortcut. Or if you go to layout, breaks, you can insert a page break that way. But I always do control enter. It's just simple. So that's just the keyboard shortcut. So what do you think about putting a left tab, a uh, decimal tab, a right tab, pretty good? Okay, so let's say I wanna put something like a top of a resume and I've got a lot of information and I wanna put some text to the left and some text to the right, or in any situation you wanna put some text to the left and some text to the right, let's say. All right, so I am going to get rid of, here's my cursor here. Let's say I'll put the word resume so it makes sense right there. I'll take this tab off and this tab off, and I'm gonna leave this right tab right smack up against the right margin, all right? Why? So let's say I put in here Jan Romano. Oop, I'm gonna be able to type today, all right, and I hit the tab key. And I'm gonna put 10 Main Street, let's say Woburn, Mass, 01801. You see what's happening is the text is lining up um, to the right, so it's backing up. And let's say I'm going to put in here um, my cell number. And then I'll hit the tab key and I'll put in my LinkedIn address. So www.linkedin slash .com slash in slash whatever it is. See how that's working? So if you want text to be typed at the left and you want text to be typed on the right, you would use a right tab on the right hand side. Pretty good? Okay, so we're continuing. And the last tab that we're going to talk about is the center tab. So I'm gonna delete all this and I'm going to show you, you know on the home tab, there's a center button. That's different from the center tab. Well, let's just talk about it. The center button lets you center text in the center of the document, right? Which is really the margins, right? In the center of the margins. So that's a center button. It automatically centers your text between your left and right margin. 
Now a center tab is wherever you put the tab stop. So let's say I wanted to center my name and address at the one inch mark. I'd come over here on the left. I'd click until I see the upside down T. There it is. I don't drag it. Remember, I just go to the ruler and I click. And an upside down T, which is the symbol for a center tab, is on the ruler. Now I hit the tab key and I'll type Jan Romano and it centers it right there. Enter. Hit the tab key. 10 Main Street. Hit enter. Hit the tab key. Blue Burn Mass. Each line is now is now being centered right at the tab stop. The center tab is different than the center button on the ruler. You got that? And you could add that center tab anywhere you want and center. And so it just depends on what you're creating if you need a center tab. All right. What do you think about tab stops? Any quick questions about tab stops before I show you the two, um, uh, not problems, but issues with them. It's already quarter of two. Oh my, we're gonna to get to, don't worry, tables and columns as well. So any quick questions, put them in the chat while I am teaching you what the two limitations are. All right, everybody, you can watch my screen if you like. I am going to put two left tabs just to make them easy. And actually, do I still have that document? Oh, no, I got rid of everything, didn't I? Yeah, let me hit undo. Maybe I don't have to do any typing. Well, that's probably too many undos that I can do. There we go, great. So this data came back up, and do you remember this text right here that I had at the two tab stops? Well, what if I wanted to put bullets on each column? The answer is no, I can't when using tabs. I can type in symbols myself, but I can't use the tab, excuse me, the bullet button. So watch when I hit the bullets, no matter what kind of bullets I use, bullets always show up in the beginning of the line. They won't show up in front of Excel and Word. So if I'm using tabs and I want bullets to show up in the beginning of each word, can't do it by using tabs. So we highly recommend, especially on a resume, definitely set tabs, tabs are the best choice to use on a resume, especially with the applicant tracking systems, looking at your resume, and then no bullets, nice and clean. So put in a list, use your left tabs, right tabs, center tabs, whatever kind of tabs you want to use, but don't put bullets in because the limitation is the bullets only show up in the beginning of the line and they don't show up in the beginning of each column. If you really want them, I can show you how to do that in just a moment. Okay? All right, the other limitation is this. What if I have a, let's say, tab, and I'm going to be putting in, I'm just going to set this up a little bit. All right, okay, so here I am. I'm going to be setting up some um, employee uh, comments. And I'm going to put a left tab here, and I'll put a left tab here, just to be dramatic and show you. Okay, here we go. So I'm going to hit the tab key, and I'm just going to say Mary Smith. And I'm going to hit the tab key. Whoops, I got the H on her name. There we go. So now I'm going to say she is a great office manager and um, operations assistant. Look, this text is not word wrapping where the tab is. Now, could I move the tab and make it all in one line? Of course I could. But the problem is, is that it will not word wrap at a tab stop. It won't. You can fudge and you can play, but it's not going to be a word wrapping situation at a tab stop. All right, so I'll show it to you again. Let's say Joe 
Jones. Hit the tab. He is a um, awesome uh, manager, and everyone likes him. Again, no word wrapping at this tab stop. Could I take this text, highlight it, move the tab so that there's no word wrapping? Sure, and leave it like that, okay. But if there's really word wrapping I need, I'm not going to use tab stops. I'm gonna use columns or I'm going to use tables. Same thing with the bullets. If I really wanted bullets to show up in the beginning of my text, I would use columns or tables. But what did I say about tables and resumes? Do not use them, right? Why? Because applicant tracking systems don't read them well. Okay. All right. Before we jump over to tables, I want to show you a, let's see, resume. Okay. You see this resume? You see these dates? They look good, right? But do you remember I showed you this button called show hide? What did this person do? These little dots mean they did space, space, space. They did tab, 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 tab. That's not efficient. So if you were sending me your resume, and I'm such a nut about Microsoft Word, I might turn the show hide on and say, oh, they don't know how to use Microsoft Word, but they say they do. This just proves to me that you just did space, 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 tab, tab, tab. Don't do that. Highlight all this. Get rid of the tab, tab, tabs, and the space, space, spaces. And I like this. And put in a tab stop. Let's put in a right tab. Because a right tab at the right margin will be better for dates. So I'm going to be using a right tab, which I did. See it on the ruler? And I hit the tab key, and it jumps over. Only one tab, stop, one hitting of the tab key, jumped over to the tab stop, okay? So I'm gonna do it again so you can see. When I turn on the show hide, oh, look at all these tabs, not a good thing, spaces, tabs, get rid of them. Highlight your line of text. Put a tab stop, and I recommend a right tab on the ruler. Click in front of your date. And you know, a lot of the times it's month and, and year that you use, but I just use the year just to make it easy for you to see visually today. And you hit the tab key and it jumps over. So now watch when I look at these two tabs. Hit this L on the ruler. I can see that both of those dates are lined up. Pretty good. So that's what I would do. I would set my tabs, I would put my show hide on, check out how I did my tabs, and then I would change them. Make sure I set a tab stop, and I like to use a right tab on a resume to line up my dates. All right, everybody, we're moving on. We're moving on now to tables. This is a table. This is a three-column, three-row table that I can type inside. I typed it before you came, but I'll show you how to create one from scratch in a minute. But I just want to show you. I type inside in these columns and rows that intersect. We call them cells, C-E-L-L-S, -L -L like we do in Excel. I hit the tab key to jump me over to the next column. So let's say manager. I hit the tab key, and when I want to type, Let's say I'm evaluating Joe Smith's um, work. All right, he is a great manager. He works well. Watch what happens with his people. They all like him. <laughs> Do you notice it's word wrapping? All right, pretty neat. So I use my tab key to get to the next line and I can type in this time Mary Jones. She is the operations manager. She works well with everyone and does a great job. Notice it is word wrapping. If I want another row, I just hit the tab key and it adds in another row. 
So working with tables is much more efficient. And take a look. Let's say I had here some skills. Maybe now I want to type some skills. I'm using my tab key. And let's say I want to put PowerPoint and Word. Hit the tab key. Another row pops up. Hit the tab key. I jump over. And let's say I want to put in Excel and Outlook. Now I want these two rows to have bullets. Can I? Absolutely. I can highlight these right here. Turn the bullets on and you'll get bullets. The only thing is skills are typically in a resume, right? So I'm going to show you if you do have this in a resume and you do have a table, I'll show you how to convert it to text in a minute. But I'm just trying to show you that there are no limitations to a table. And then let me just show you real quick. When I go to print, a table has borders. And I can print the borders, or I can take those borders off. And I can tell Microsoft Word not to print those borders by taking them off here. And I'm going to show you how to do that. I'm going to show you how to create a table, add in rows, add in columns, take away rows, take away columns, edit it so that it looks very fancy as well as very simple. And also if it has, you want shading in it, I'll show you how to do that. You want bullets in it. Again, I just showed you. All I did was highlight and turn the bullet button on, right? If I don't want bullets, I shut them off by using the bullet button. Turn them on, shut them off, okay? So I'm gonna show you all this. I just wanted to give you an idea of what a table looked like. Let me jump back to my PowerPoint. We're going to talk about tables. And I will tell you there are three ways to put in tables. There's, you can draw the table. You can tell PowerPoint to insert the table. Excuse me, Microsoft Word to insert the table. You can do that in PowerPoint too. And you can also um, do a quick shortcut way. So I'm going to show you a couple of different ways to create tables. And then we're going to learn how to use the design tab and the layout tab. There are going to be two tabs that pop up in Microsoft Word, and they're specifically used for tables. And they only show up when you create a table. So I'll be showing you where the layout tab is, where the design tab is, and I'll be showing you how to create a table from scratch right now. Remember, tables are very versatile. They are definitely worth using. And I'm going to show you all about them. So here we go. Here's my cursor. Here's my blank document. I'm going to come up to insert off of the ribbon and notice table is right underneath it. Okay. I'm going to click on table. And I want you to notice these boxes. And I want you to ignore them for just a moment. I want you to come down and take a look at insert table. Notice this dialog box pops up. How many columns and how many rows do you want? Now these can be changed later. So if you make a mistake, don't worry. I can add more rows, more columns, delete more extra rows that I might have put in or delete extra columns by mistake. All right? So you decide how many columns and how many rows you want. So I'm going to say that I just want two columns and two rows to make it nice and easy. And I want you to notice when it builds it, it goes across the whole ruler and uses the entire margin. Now, I see a very long question in the chat, so give me a second to read it. Okay. I don't, so do you know? Okay, someone's asking something specific to what they did when they were wrapped um, in a table, I believe, or they tried to tab from one field to the next. So I'd have to see that um, example of that. So if you want to email me an example of that um, to my email address, that'll be great. And then I can take a look at it because I'm not quite sure about the details. So um, as we continue, Maybe you'll even see some of the answers to your question that you might have as well. 
All right. So what did I create? I created a two column, two row table, which comes up with borders. And it comes up with this little box right here that's a four headed arrow. And if I get my mouse on that four headed arrow, my mouse turns into a four headed arrow. So a four headed arrow on a box with a four headed arrow inside. When I click, it will select the entire table. So if I ever need to bold or italicize or change the font or change the size of whatever's in my entire table, I can do that before I even start or after by clicking on this four headed arrow box. All right, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in, uh, let's say um, these are going to be employees. So Joe Smith, hit the tab key. I'm gonna put the, actually, let me put a heading here, okay? All right, so I'll put name and I'll put job title, pretty simple. So I type by tab. Now, notice where the cursor is? I hit the tab key to get down to the next line. Very simple. So I'll type in Joe Smith and I'll put manager. And now I realize, oh, I need more rows. I just hit the tab key and it'll add in a row. And I'll type um, Sally Jones, hit the tab key, put manager. I need another row. Well, what do I do? I just hit the tab key. And I'll just put one more, Jan Romano, and I'll put instructor. Okay, so you're just hitting the tab key once and you're getting one row. I'll show you some other things as we continue. So a little bit at a time, some of you are asking some great questions, but I'm going to get there little by little. So do you see this? Looks okay, right? All right, well, what if I decided that I wanted to size this table? make the columns a little narrower. Well, you have two choices. And again, I'm gonna be teaching all kinds of stuff, so don't blink. And then I'll be just in a consistent pattern teaching you how to use tables. So I'm gonna to go to the corner here. This is called the sizing handle. It's a square and I'm gonna drag and it will, let me make it taller, narrower, wider, Wherever I drag, I'm going to be able to change the width, the height of the table. I'm also going to be able to, again, go back and change it however I want. But what if I want just the first column to be narrower and the next column to be a little wider? Well, that's when I would put my mouse on the line that separates these two columns, and I'm going to get a double arrow. And a double arrow always means when I size, when I drag, it'll size. So I'm gonna take this and drag it to the left and notice the first column is narrower and the next column then becomes larger. I can drag over here, get my mouse on the right and drag if I wanted to. So there are many ways that I can change the look of my table. I can use the corner handle, make it larger, make it smaller, and I can get on the lines that separate the columns and make the columns larger or smaller. All right, if I want to add another row, let's say between Joe Smith and name, I click on where Joe Smith is. When I come on up here and notice table tools is new, it's because my cursor's inside this table. And look, I get two new tabs under table tools. One is called design, and one is called layout. And in layout, I want you to notice, insert above, that means insert a row above where my cursor is. Insert below, insert a row below. Insert a column to the left of where my cursor is. Insert a column to the right of where my cursor is. So if I wanna insert a row and keep Joe Smith there, but insert a row above Sally Jones, I'll insert below. And there's the new row that I wanted to put, um, uh, Mark um, Sullivan. And these are, let's see, this person is also a trainer, let's say. That is a different description. So you always are going to click inside where you want to make some changes. So I'm going to click on name. Come on up here and do insert above. Because now maybe I want to type in mass higher here on the top and I want to center it. So 
I want you to notice something. There are two right here, two columns in this one row, just like the rest of the table. I can come up to the layout tab under table tools and choose merge cells. So each one of these boxes is called a cell and I click on merge cells and they'll be merged together. Why? So I can type, take a look, Mass Hire, Metro North, Career Center. Oops. And then I can center this. And I don't have to go home and center because there's centering buttons here. In the alignment group on the layout tab underneath table tools. So I can hit center and it centers it vertically as well as horizontally with this button right here. Okay. Now, if I needed another column, I can add another column as I showed you. Insert above, below is rows to the right or left are columns. Okay. Now, what if by mistake I had many rows and I wanted to delete them? I would go out to the left and highlight them. And notice this delete button. Where is it? It's on the layout tab under table tools. Notice this delete button lets me delete rows. It also lets me delete cells, columns, and a whole table if I wanted to. I'll delete rows. Notice where my cursor is. Maybe I want to type paragraph down here. Am I in the table? The answer is no. My cursor is not in the table, so notice I don't have the layout and design under table tools on my ribbon. But once I click inside the table anywhere, I get these two tabs back again under table tools. So what do you think about inserting columns, inserting rows? One of the quick ways is I could just hit the tab key and it'll give me another row once I'm at the bottom of the, so if I hit the tab key right here after instructor, it'll give me another row. That's a quick way. Or I could go up to layout and insert above below. I want another column, right or left. Okay? All right. What if I wanted to make this, remember I did merge. I merged cells and then I centered. So all the buttons are right here on the layout tab. So what if I wanted to make this look better with shading and maybe some colors, right? All right. What would I do? I would go to the design tab under table tools. So design is more for making the table look good. And I want you to notice right here, there's something called table styles. And when I click this down arrow, I'll we'll see all kinds of colors and all kinds of styles. Some have lots of shading, some have borders, some don't. So I'm gonna choose the one that I would like maybe the best. And now I can change the look by just choosing one of these styles and deciding how I want it to look. Some have shading, some don't. Some show borders, some don't. Some have italics and centering and right aligning. And all of these are built in under design in the table tools. What do you think about that? Pretty easy? Now, there's also a choice to remove the borders. Watch when I click this down arrow. I see all the colors, right? But I come down way down here to the bottom. Underneath modify table style, there's a, a button called clear. And what that does is that clears the borders in the shading. Watch when I click clear. Okay. Now you might say there are borders there. Watch when I print. I'll tell you what they're called in a minute. When I go to file print, you see no borders are printing. Clear means no borders, no shading. Well, what are these things? What are these dotted lines? Watch when I go to this. Again, I'm on design under table tools. I'm going to this border button, view grid lines I had on. It's a toggle. If I click on view grid lines like I did, it shows me where the columns and the rows are. But those are just for my eyes, they don't print. But if I don't even want those, I can click on view grid lines and take off 
but this is still a table. Do you notice this four-headed arrow right here? It's still a table. This whole thing is still a table, even though I don't have any borders showing and I don't have any grid lines showing. Grid lines under the border button, view grid lines, helps me to see where my columns and rows are. If I go to table styles, I can choose any type of style that I'm interested in using to show me where my columns and rows are. And those styles will print. Watch when I hit print, it'll print like this. So I can decide right here, any colors, any shadings, or clear and not have any borders or shading. I can also, when I clear, decide on what borders and shading I want if I highlight. So if I just decide to highlight just the top piece, I can go to shading and choose a color, and I can go to borders and decide if I want any borders. So you have many, many choices, right? So the choice would be looking at these right here, choosing a style that you might like, or choosing no style and taking each row that you want, highlighting them one at a time or all at once, and then deciding what you'd like it to look like. So if I want some green shading there, I can or yellow, I can add that myself. So do you wanna do it manually or do you wanna make the choices from this list right here? That's totally up to you that you have that opportunity to do so. So can you add more than one table? Sure. Let's take a look at putting my cursor right here. And remember what I did, let's review. I went to insert, I went to table. I did insert table and decided how many columns and how many rows. Let me cancel that for a minute though. Let's go back to insert table and let's take a look at this shortcut. You see how many columns and rows there are based on these boxes? There's 10 columns and eight rows. So if I want to move my mouse around, I can see six by four. I can see two by two, five by five. I click and it's done. So that's a quick shortcut to creating a table. And then again, you would type inside, right? If you make mistakes and you say, oh my dear, I have so many columns, I don't need them. Remember, you can just bring your mouse the little black arrow that lets you highlight columns. Go to layout, delete columns. There you go. You want to make it larger? Go to the sizing handle and drag and make it larger. You want to make it taller? Drag it down. Now there is a way to set the height and width of every row and column. So you would click on this four-headed arrow. You would come up and decide, you know, how big you want each column to be and how big you want each row to be. So you could decide columns and rows. So if I want every column to be 1.5 and then every row to be a certain height, I can do that by using, as long as I've clicked on this four-headed arrow and selecting the whole table, I can make, I can do that. So just remember, you highlight a row, or you take your mouse, bring it to the top, you highlight a column, or you click on the four-headed arrow and you highlight the whole thing. And then you can make changes. You can bold, you can italics, you can underline, you can do anything you want. And remember, you have your design and your layout tabs. All right, let me just show you this, and then we will um, be able to move on to columns. But let's go to File New, and let me find a template for a resume. Because a lot of us use these templates, don't we? But I want to show you, templates are great to create a resume. But there are, let's put Jan Romano up here. So nice to use it because it already formats it for me. But notice this four-headed arrow. 
this is a table. Now, I don't have to worry too much about this table up here until I put in my email address and my LinkedIn profile. The applicant tracking system may not read that well, especially watch down here, see skills. Let's say I put Outlook and then I put Excel. And then I put here PowerPoint and I'll put here um, Word. What is this, everybody? Do you recognize what this is? If I click on this four headed arrow, what is this? This is a table, isn't it? It's a two column, one row table. Will the applicant tracking system read this? Come to my class and I'll show you a couple little things. What might the applicant tracking system do? Let me just take this and change the font for a minute. The applicant tracking system might take the word Outlook and Excel and PowerPoint and Word and smush them together like that. Because the applicant tracking system reads left to right but it doesn't understand because there are no tab stops here. It doesn't understand that this two different columns in a table because it doesn't read tables as well. It'll read the text, but it might put the text together like that. And you see Outlook and Excel and PowerPoint and Word are very important. Let's say the job description that they know I'd have these Microsoft Office skills, but now the applicant tracking system doesn't read them right. And none of those words will be recognized by the applicant tracking system. So how would I get rid of a table in a resume? How do I know I have a table in a resume? Well, you open your resume, you click on your text, you take a look and you keep clicking, go down a couple of rows and keep clicking, see if you have this four-headed arrow. When you click on that four-headed arrow, that shows you the entire table and there's the table right there. Let me show you how to convert it. I'm going to go up to the Layout tab under Table Tools. I'm going to come over here to the right where it says Convert to Text. And when I click on Convert to Text, I'm going to say I want tabs instead. Tabs are good on a, on a resume. When I click OK, it will typically put tab stops on the ruler. Oh, but it didn't. That's OK. I'll put tab stops on the ruler. I'll go up and hit the tab stops and I will delete and hit the tab key. Let's put tab here and I'm going to take off the, well, sorry, you know what? Sorry, let me, let me show you always <laughs> before you put the tabs on what are you supposed to do? You're supposed to highlight, right? I forgot to do that. Always highlight and then you put the tabs on the ruler. Let me put them on the ruler now. And let me take off the bullets because remember the bullets will only show up in the beginning of the line. And I'll hit the tab key and I'll hit enter. Hit the tab key. I'll go after Excel and hit the delete key and then hit the tab key to move Word over. Using tab stops is the best way on a resume, not tables. So if you have tables, how do I know I have a table here? Click on this four-headed arrow. Oh, I've got a table. Best to convert. Text. So convert that to text. And that way they won't have any trouble. And look, I've got another table. I click, layout, convert to text. Okay, don't need any tabs there. And then I might even take this up here. Layout, convert to text. There's no way to do them. You have to do them one at a time, is my point. So convert tables to text if you open your resume and you see the four-headed arrow, which represents a table. Remember, tables. Whatever you want to do to a table, go to Layout, look at all your choices. Go to Design under Table Tools and look at all the choices. Some are built in and some are separate buttons that you can play around with 
and you can make your own design. When you create a table, you can type, you hit the tab key, you can type, and it will word wrap, right? Okay. You can type, hit the tab key, you can highlight a row, and go home and use your bullet button, and bullets will show up in every column. As long as this isn't a resume, you are good to use tables. You want it to look a little different? You go up to layout under table tools, excuse me, design under table tools, and you click the down arrow, and you choose a design that you prefer. Pretty good? All right, what do you think about tables? It's 217, so I'm going to be showing you columns in just a minute. How do you feel about tables? And remember, you can take the borders off, but also show the grid line so that it's easy for you to see where those columns are. And when I go back to this presentation, remember, here are the instructions. Here are the buttons we used on the design tab. Here's the buttons that we used on the layout tab. And you can also put in a tab stop into a table. So hold on a second. Let me change the look of this. And let me add in a column to the right. Okay, now merge this again. There we go. So let's say I wanted the salary here. All right, I'm going to highlight these cells. I'm going to come over to the left. Remember my tab stops? I'm going to find the upside down T with the dot. And I'm going to put it, let's say, right here in this column. So now, when I hit the tab key, it'll jump over to the tab stop in the column. And I'll put uh, 35 or 36, 50. And I'll go to trainer and hit the tab key and a decimal tab shows up and it's jumping me right to the decimal tab. And I will put uh, 40, again, manager, hit the tab key, 25, and hit the tab key and put in, you know, uh, 20. Make sense? So yes, you can have a tab stop that you've highlighted all the cells and you've added the tab stop to. And when you click in the column before and hit the tab key, then you're able to jump over to that particular tab stop in that particular column. All right, pretty good. That was a question in the chat, so great question. Okay, everybody, let's go to newsletter style columns, which doesn't take us very long. It's good because we don't have too many minutes left. And so newsletter style columns are different than tabs and different than tables. Okay. Tabs, you set the tabs before you type. Tables, you create the table before you type. Columns, you type the text in plainly first. Then you say to Microsoft Word, you want columns. So let's take a look at this document that I have as an example. So let's say I want to take these three paragraphs, I'm going to highlight them, and I want them to be in two columns with a line in between. Okay? So notice where I'm going. Going to go to the layout tab, not the one for tables, just the layout tab. I'm going to find this button called columns. Now, if I don't want a line in between, I can just set, say, one, two, three. But if I want four or a line in between, I go to more columns. So let's say I want two, so I'll click two, or I could type a number two right here. And right here is a line between, meaning a vertical line that Microsoft Word will type for me. And here's a display, here's a preview. 
So the rest of the document above and below these columns are going to be in regular margins, and these two call these two paragraphs are going to be in columns. We read down one column, up the other. So I highlighted the text first, and then I turned it into columns. Making sense? All right, I'm going to hit undo. What if I want the entire document to be in columns? Take a look. This is a two-page document. I put my mouse in the beginning of the text. Layout, columns. I'll put two, just for the fun of it, and notice two columns. Do I want a line in between? Oh, columns, more columns. I already chose two, and then I'll click line between. And here's the key right here. This is applying it to the whole document. That's built in. I click OK, and there it is. But I want you to look at page two with me. Page two doesn't have enough information for two columns. So look what I might do. I might click in front of interested in learning more about us. I may be in front of the Northeast community. Let's say I put it here. And I go to breaks. And I do a column break. You see it? And now I've broken that into two columns. So I'm going to hit undo so you can see. If I continue to type here, it types down in a column, right? If I get to the bottom margin, then it will come up to the second page, right? But if I only want this much text and I decide to break the columns here, I click in front of the text that I want. I go to layout, breaks, and I want to put a column break in. And that breaks the first column and puts the information over to the next column. What do you think? All right. Now, what if what if somebody emails this to you and you're like, oh, gee, I didn't want two columns. I wanted three. That's okay. Control A lets you select the entire document. Go to columns and choose one. One column puts it back to just normal text. Then you'd highlight the text, of course. Columns, maybe you want three. And there's your three. Now remember the line won't show up unless you go to more columns and choose a line in between. And if you don't want a line in between, that is always empty. So this is the default. If you do want a line in between, you go to columns, more columns, and a line in between. Now, does the applicant tracking system like columns? The answer is no. So if you need columns, what are you going to do? You're going to use tabs. All right, so for a resume in an applicant tracking system, it's going to read your resume. You're going to use tabs, not tables, and not columns. All right, let me hit undo for a second. And let me show you one more thing about columns and we'll be done. I'm going to do file new so you can stay an extra minute so that I can do the file transfer. But I'm going to do this. Let's say, for example, I want Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Outlook, um, Windows, uh, let's say QuickBooks. These are my um, skills and I want them in columns. Always hit enter at least once after the last line of text before you put text into columns. So if you're typing a list somewhere, not in a resume, but if you're typing a list, Always hit enter, so I hit enter after QuickBooks. Then I highlight, go to layout, columns, maybe I want two, and watch if I put bullets, it works. Bullets and columns, not bullets and tabs, but bullets and columns work. But you need to make sure that you type the text in first, then you dress the text up with columns. All right, so you have the text. You decide what text you want to put into columns. You decide how many columns you want. And then you 
formatted for columns. Okay, we turn on the bullets and each one, each column will have bullets. If you turn them on, if you don't want them, you can shut them off. Okay, all right. Okay, well, our time is up and I just wanted to show you that you are going to be able to see more about um, Microsoft